Hi, uh, this is Tandra from Green Tree Chiropractic. I'm just continuing on that series, uh, kind of showing you and demonstrating some of the more advanced training that we get as chiropractors. So the next screen I'm going to be showing you is an abdominal screen. Um, abdominal screens are done because when you've got a problem with one of the organs in the abdomen, it can actually cause what's called a referred pain where you might feel it into your lower back. And that's really not uncommon. You've probably experienced perhaps a kidney uh, infection and that would refer to this area of your back, which is called your flank. That's not uncommon. Or gynecological problems such as fibroids or ovarian cysts, or you can get something called uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, which is inflammation of the uterus. Um, endometriosis, all of them will refer to the back fairly commonly. Your pancreas, if it becomes inflamed, that will refer into the lower back. Um, so there's a lot of different conditions that we would want to exclude to make sure that we were actually treating a musculoskeletal condition and not something else that would require referral. So when we start this particular assessment, um, we're always going to start with observations. Again, you always look at the patient first. So typically what we would be looking for um, is something called ascites. And ascites is where you've got retention of fluid around the abdomen and the belly will swell and it looks like fluid, like a pregnant belly. It doesn't really look like the fluff that you might get if you're carrying a little extra weight into the front. So we would observe for that. Um, certain conditions will give you very characteristic uh, types of, of stretch marks into the abdomen. If you see those kind of silvery lines, that's a stretch mark typically. But if you have Cushing's disease, which is a problem with your cortisol levels, for instance, then that gives you these kind of purple lines going down or liver problems will actually give you a mark that looks a little bit like spider's web. It's called a spider navy. Um, so we would observe for things like that. Again, you're always looking for the swelling and the nails and you know how the patient is going. Um, with some people, you can actually see you've got a big artery called the abdominal aorta going down here. Um, on somebody that's relatively thin, you can see that pulsating and you can see it a little bit in Tim here. But if that was having a problem, you might see a, a larger visible pulsation, and that might be something that we would look for as well. So to start the exam, you always start by excluding the biggest bad first, and the biggest bad is going to be a problem with one of the arteries in the abdomen. So as I said, we've got the uh, heart coming down, and the heart basically has this arch that comes down, and then you've got what's called the thoracic aorta, and then it turns into the abdominal aorta. And that sits fairly central, but slightly off to the left, and then down around the belly button, whose fancy name is the umbilicus, it actually divides, and you've got the iliac arteries going here, and then they turn into the femoral arteries feeding down into the legs. So you would always want to start by having a listen to make sure that you don't have a brewery. And a brewery, again, is that regurgitated blood flow, which could indicate, for instance, that the abdominal aorta is starting to enlarge. So if I was going to have a listen, you've got the margin of the ribs here, so I wouldn't want to listen onto the ribs. So I know I'm going to come come to the base of the sternum and then down just a little bit and slightly off to the left. And that would be where I would be putting my stethoscope. And really, I shouldn't hear anything. But if I heard a brewery, then it would sound a little bit like a whooshing sound, like a seashell put into your ear. After that, I go to the uh, renal arteries, which feed the kidneys. And so I'm going to kind of come down and make a triangle. The renal's in the flank, so I'm basically imagining where the kidney is and bringing it across to kind of have a listen. And typically, again, you shouldn't hear anything. After that, I can come down and do the iliac arteries as they divide down as if they're going into the legs. And again, I shouldn't hear much here either. I can also have a listen to the abdomen in general. So just having a listen for bowel sounds. So every minute your bowel is producing between five and 34 sounds. And actually you're working on breakfast that you ate two days ago. So what I'm listening for is for the bowel to hear anywhere between five and 34 of these sounds a minute. And usually the best place to hear them is gonna be down in that right lower quadrant. If I didn't hear any bowel sounds, that would be very concerning because that might indicate that one of the organs perhaps was uh, starting to become um, dangerously compromised or maybe you had blood in the belly or something like that. So you should always hear those nice normal sounds. Okay, after that, what I'm gonna do is look for kind of generalized tenderness. So Tim, I'm just gonna tap around your belly and I want you to let me know if anything hurts. So again, this is kind of like a drum. You listen for timpani and you might hear a bit of a dull sound. And again, that might be something just like the stool that he's working on um, going through as the digestive system passes. But if you had tenderness and something like that, then again, you might look to see if there was a mass, if it, if it went in line with whatever systemic uh, symptoms he was presenting with. So you're just looking for that and making sure it's not tender. Next, what I wanna do is I want to assess the liver 
The liver sits on the right hand side, it's really big. So it would typically be somewhere between eight and 12 centimeters at its biggest point, which is kind of on the mid uh, clavicular line again. So to find it, I wanna start where I know it shouldn't be. And I start to tap up and I'm looking for that difference in sound and that finds the bottom aspect of the liver. And then I'm gonna come up, I'm just gonna tap down into the bed, okay? And I'm listening again for that top margin and I'm measuring that against what I think normal would be. So that would be percussing the liver. I could also percuss the spleen. Now the spleen sits tucked up here underneath the ribs. So unless it's enlarged, again, it's not something you would typically be able to percuss. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the anterior auxiliary line I'm gonna come into that last intercostal space and I'm just gonna tap, kind of get you to take a breath in. And what I'm listening for is that it sounds the same and exhale, okay? Now, if he had an enlargement of the spleen, when you take a breath in, the diaphragm forces all the organs downward. So that would potentially bring it down under my hand and you would get a sound and change. But normally that doesn't happen. And so that was a nice normal finding. That's absolutely fine. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a light palpation, again, looking for any tenderness. So Tim, if it's okay, I'm just gonna feel through the abdomen. I want you to let me know if anything hurts. So the belly is fairly tender. So you always wanna do this kind of on the oblique, and you're, which means on a diagonal. And I'm feeling through the musculature, but I'm looking to see whether or not it's hurt. People will resist, like here, Tim is guarding against me. He's tightening his belly just a little bit. It's not particularly comfortable for him. Um, but he's not complaining and you watch their faces. I can't see any apprehension or any wincing. So probably just normal uh, tenderness. So after I've done that, what I could do is use a deep palpation. Now a deep palpation is medically used to line out a mass. So let's say Tim has some sort of concerning symptom. Maybe I'm worried that his appendix is getting enlarged. I could look to see how big that was uh, with a deeper palpation. So again, Tim, what I'm gonna do is just palpate in a little bit deeper this time. So I would use two fingers and I'm gonna do a nice slow spiral in, but it is much deeper because I'm trying to go through the muscular layers. And again, you can see he's kind of resisting me. Try to relax if you can. <laughs> I know it's not very comfortable, but I would be doing this to, again, line out a mass. So this isn't something that's commonly done uh, as part of your normal thing that you would expect here at the clinic, but it is something that I might use if I was worried. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna palpate some of the organs. So I'm gonna have a feel for what Tim's liver feels like. If you've ever looked at a liver in a grocery store, you can see it's nice and smooth and slippery, and it should feel exactly the same way. So I'm gonna bring my hand under your back, Tim. My fingers are up along the mid-clavicular line here, and I'm just gonna hook my fingers up and in a little bit. Can you take a breath in for me? That slides liver under my fingers. I just, oh, just hold the breath for me for a second. Good. I'm gonna lighten my pressure now, exhale. And what that does is that allows the liver essentially to slide under my, my fingers. I lighten pressure and then allow it to slide away again. And I'm feeling that that's nice and smooth. If it was bumpy or hard, that could be like a cirrhosis or a hepatitis or, or possibly even a cancer if we, if we were really unlucky. I can then try to palpate the spleen. So Tim, I'm gonna come onto this side if that's okay. So again, we know that the spleen sits tucked up under the ribs here. So I'm gonna put my hand onto this kind of uh, diagonal and slide under, try to relax for me. There we go. Take a breath in. And again, this one I'm looking for pain and nothing should happen because the spleen, if it was a nice normal size, it should still never come anywhere near my fingers. So again, he's absolutely fine there. Um, I could then look at trying to palpate the kidneys. Now the kidneys are really deep into your back, which is why you feel them as flank pain. Um, and, and unless you're really thin, in all honesty, it's really difficult to palpate them, but we'll give it a go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna compress his abdomen. And what I'm trying to do is just feel with my bottom hand if I can feel what the kidney feels like. And then I can do something called kidney ballotment. So if you imagine my top hand is on his abdomen and my bottom hand is under, I'm basically bouncing the kidney towards my top hand to see if I can almost catch it. And then I would repeat it because you've got two kidneys. I would repeat it on the other side. I compress and I feel and then I ballot and I'm not feeling all that much there and he's not experiencing any tenderness coming in. After I palpate the kidneys, I could actually look at palpating the abdominal aorta. So the abdominal aorta in a man should be no bigger than 2.5 centimeters and in a woman should be no bigger than 1.8 centimeters. So that's roughly again, about the size of a garden hose or a 50p coin in, in someone of Tim's size. So I'm gonna start way over here because I know that it shouldn't be there and that makes sure that I don't hit the borders. And I'm basically palpating in to kind of catch 
the edge. And what I'm looking for is to try to pin it. There we go, and you can feel that pulsation. Can you feel that kind of pulsing under my fingers? Sometimes it makes you feel a little bit sick when it's being done, but you're basically just trying to measure how big that is. If somebody had a little bit of extra fluff, you probably wouldn't be able to do this. It does uh, rely on you being able to get through that extra tissue in order to, to kind of measure that. Now, if I was gonna go ahead and finish off that screen, what I would do is I would ask Tim to come up for me. I'm spin that way, please. I'm just gonna move myself here. Okay. And I can finish and try and look at the kidneys again. So if I'm looking at the kidneys, here's his vertebral column and here's the ribs. This space here is called the costovertebral angle. So I could palpate to see if that was tender. If there was an acute kidney infection, it probably would be. But let's say he'd had a kidney infection and maybe he took um, some antibiotics and it didn't quite kill off all the bugs, but um, he wasn't feeling sick anymore. It's called a sub subacute infection. What I could do is I could see if there was like a deep tenderness and I could just do a little tap to see whether or not there was any uh, tenderness. You'd only do this if it wasn't tender, but it can be good if there's only very minimal inflammation in the kidney and you were trying to provoke a response. Um, there's also a couple of extra tests that we could do. That would be a normal screen, but if you come back and lay down for me again and keep your knees bent and your feet flat. If I was looking for some common conditions, like let's say appendicitis, the appendix comes and it sits in the right lower quadrant, it's fairly deep. So I can use something called a rebound test. A rebound test is basically where I would put my fingers into the musculature and that would be non-tender. But when I quickly pull it out, that would be what you would get the pain. And that is basically looking for retroperitoneal tenderness. For the kidney, uh, beg your pardon, the appendix, it's got a specific point, it's called McBurney's point. And that is basically, if I go from his belly button to what's called the ASIS, that's the top bony part of your hip bone, if I go dead center and do a rebound test there, you would be looking for tenderness to come in and that would be a positive for appendicitis. The appendix sits really close to the hip flexor muscles as well. So if it's inflamed, they also become inflamed typically. So I could do a resisted, just bring your knee to your nose. Don't let me pull this away. A resisted hip flexion test, and that would be quite uncomfortable. And you can also do resisted internal uh, rotation and, and things like that as well, but probably your hip flexion test is gonna be your best. If I wanted to check the gallbladder to see if that was inflamed, that's called Murphy's test. So right here, you've got the rectus abdomini, okay? So you've got a, a, a what you kind of think of as your typical six pack. And then we would know that we've got the liver here on the midclavicular line. The gallbladder sits at the base of the liver. So basically, I'm just going in between the midclavicular line and the rectus abdomini. And I would again, I'm just going to slide my hand under. I'm just going to put my fingers in, take a breath. This brings the liver in, uh, into my fingers and therefore gallbladder as well. And I would be looking for actual pain. It's not palpating for something, but if it's inflamed, it's actually touching your finger and that would cause uh, an active pain to occur. Um, I could assess for a hernia if I wanted to. So hernias, um, you, you would be looking at the abdomen to see if there's a protrusion. That's basically where you've got a hole in the abdominal musculature and intestines are starting to poke through a little bit. Um, so I could observe here and then I could ask Tim to do a cough and I would be looking for this kind of focal point where it kind of pops up. Can you put your hands behind your head? Do a little crunch. Again, looking to see nothing's happening. Now cough again. <coughs> Okay, and then what I'm gonna get you to do is to come up to sit for me, and this time face, so I'm behind you again. Thank you. And I could observe, again, sometimes gravity will make them more um, focal, so we could be looking for that, and then I could get them to cough again for me. <clears throat> and that might give me an indication of a hernia if it wasn't. A lot of times they're in the inguinal space, which is in the part of the hip flexors, but you can get them around the umbilicus and other places in the abdomen, so that would be kind of a general test that we might do for that as well. Okay, so that it kind of gives you an idea of the things we're looking for. Hope you found this informative and enjoyable, and thank you very much for listening.